Hi, my name's Dave. You're watching Make For Others. And this episode, we're gonna build a helmet stand for my friend George's helmet. I'd been working on a Star Wars Boba Fett helmet for my friend George, and also wanted to give him a few options for where it could hang, in case he wasn't gonna constantly wear it. Some kind of stand or something to hang it on a wall seemed like the best things to give him. We'll cover the wall hook project in a different video, but for the stand, I wanted it to be simple and not take away any focus from the helmet. But when the helmet is not there, I want the stand to look really cool, something George and his wife would like to have around. So with that in mind, I had recently seen the technique called slice form, where you put together flat pieces to make a three-dimensional shape. There's some really amazing slice forms online, but since this is my first one and it needed to be functional, I went with a sphere form so I could quickly explore the technique and find what would work best to hold the helmet in place. There are all kinds of ways to do slice forms. And the basic idea with this one is to have a set of differently sized circles intersect perpendicularly with a duplicate set of circles. So I started working in a program called Adobe Illustrator to figure out the sizes and intersection points. I printed a small test version of the circles onto cardstock, which is basically just thick paper. They were quick to print and cut. So if I'd miscalculated, it wasn't a big investment in time. We cut out all the circles and then assembled them. The first test went well, but I wanted to play around with the sizes of the individual circles and the distances between them. So we started making more tests at the size the final piece would be. Eventually, we found the design that worked best. By this time, I'd found an inexpensive floor lamp that we would use parts of for the base of the stand and had taken measurements of the pole to make sure there was enough space in the middle of the slice form for it to fit. I had some sheets of 8th inch acrylic and really like how smooth a finish it can have with little to no sanding. So I took the final design and altered it to factor in the thickness of the acrylic so that the pieces would slide into each other smoothly during assembly. The goal was to get close to a friction fit, but I figured I'd be using some glue to keep it all together. The design file and acrylic got taken to a friend of mine who has an awesome laser cutter. He also has a lot of experience cutting different materials and thicknesses, so I didn't have to do any tests to know how fast the laser needed to move or what power level to set, so it would cut all the way through. The final pieces only ended up taking about 15 minutes to cut, and the toughest part <laughs> was not watching the laser work. It's way too bright on the eyeballs. Back at home, I used a scotch Bright pad to roughen up the acrylic circles, so the spray paint would have something to grab onto. Otherwise, it might just flake off over time. It didn't take too long to sand all of them, which is great because I don't love sanding. Before the paint, I drilled three holes into the two circles that would hold the slice form to the stand. They were thin enough that I could drill them at the same time, so the holes would match up exactly. After a quick test fit with the bolts and nuts, I wiped down all the circles to get rid of any dust left over from sanding and drilling. Two light coats of matte black spray paint on each side worked out really well. While waiting for them to dry, I removed the floor lamp electrical wiring and assembled it to decide the height the helmet would sit. Too low and it looks just sad. Too high and people might ask, why does George have a Boba Fett floor lamp sitting on an end table? A small pipe cutter and a lot of twisting got the pole to the chosen length. There was a lot of twisting and an occasional blade tightening involved. A lot. If you're building a stand, but want a really simple solution to the top part, an alternative is to just take a tennis ball, make some cuts, and use that as what the helmet sits on. Also, while I bought an inexpensive floor lamp to use, you could just as easily find a table lamp, make something out of a block of wood and a dowel rod or a PVC pipe, a few modifications and spray paint, and you'd be good to go. Anyway, once the pole was cut to length, I used a hammer and nail to put dents where I was gonna drill. These dents made it easier to drill because it gave the drill bit something of a starting point. Otherwise, it would be really easy for the drill bit to wander around on that curved surface. A center punch tool would have made this even easier, but I couldn't find it at the time. Pretty sure our dog had something to do with it. I tested denting and drilling on the cut part before using the actual pole. There was a little bit of blowout on the test piece, so for the real pole, I ended up using a smaller drill bit first and then drilled through the holes on both sides with the final drill bit to get rid of the blowout. 
I put some boards on both sides of the pole to stop it from rolling around, marked where the holes needed to go, and then repeated the denting and drilling. As you watch the pole rolling around, <laughs> you may already be guessing the problem I'm about to run into. From there, I switched out the drill bit to make the holes the final size and get rid of the blowout. I was fortunate the holes on the end of the pole didn't tear it open. Next time, I'd drill a bit further away from the edge. Now it was finally time to put everything together. So I screwed the two main circles to the pole. And after that, it was just gonna be a matter of assembling the rest of the sphere the same way I did with the paper tests. However, after I connected a few of the pieces, it was looking a bit wonky. I could see that the top screw holes didn't line up with the others just enough to make problems. So I cut off some of the inner parts of the larger circles and removed the top bolt and nut. This fixed the problem and next time, I would lock the pole down more securely for drilling. The great news is, it didn't end up needing any glue. It's a really strong friction fit. And to finish it all off, I just screwed it onto the base. And now we have a finished helmet stand for George. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. You could easily make something simpler or more complex. It really just depends on your personal preference. I wanted to try a few different techniques that I hadn't done before. And I also wanted to make sure that the helmet stayed the main focus.